Hello everyone, and today we are doing a tour of Virgie's website. So, first things first is her main page, which is also the body positivity or body positive journal page. Um, and it's just promoting this new workbook that she has out. Next we'll go to the about page, which has, this isn't too long. Oh, she has a TED talk. Ooh, okay. I think we'll do that next video, but for today we will read her um, about page. Virgie Tovar is an author, activist, and one of the nation's leading expert and lecturers on weight-based discrimination and body image. She holds a master's degree in sexuality studies with a focus on the intersection of body size, race, and gender. She is a contributor for Forbes, where she covers the plus-size market and how to end weight discrimination at work. She started the hashtag campaign, hashtag lose hate, not weight, and in 2018 gave a TED Talk on the origins of the campaign. Tovar edited the anthology Hot and Heavy, Fierce Fat Girls on Life, Love, and Fashion, which we will actually be looking at later this summer. And she's the author of You Have the Right to Remain Fat, which we're reading now, which was placed on the American Library Association's Amelia Bloomer list. The Self-Love Revolution, Radical Body Positivity for Girls of Color, and her interactive book, The Body Positivity Journal. So this... But I think if I can find this at my local library or something, uh, we'll cover this one too. We'll take a look at her books later, but I believe this is like a teen book, and so I'm very curious. Her podcast, Rebel Eaters Club, is now in season three and the Transmitter Media's first original production. In 2018, she was named one of the 50 most influential feminists by Bitch Magazine. She has received three San Francisco Art Commission Individual Artist Commissions, as well as Yale's Pointer Fellowship in Journalism. Virgie has been featured by the New York Times, Tech Insider, BBC, MTV, Al Jazeera, NPR, and Yahoo Health. She lives in San Francisco. Subscribe to her newsletter, Body Positive University, to get weekly emails. So let's take a look at the newsletter. So this is her newsletter. I don't know if we'll subscribe, but we can certainly read through the old issues of the newsletter. I think that sounds like something we can totally do. Uh, let's take a look at her books. So here's The Self-Love Revolution. Yep, it's for teens and girls of color. So I think it would be worth it, given that we're covering all things Virgie. We'll cover that. I'm half tempted to cover her body positivity journal, body positive journal, but that would mean I would actually have to buy it. And I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> courses. Apparently she has some courses. Uh, let's take a look at those. Coaching. 60 minute coffee talk with Virgie Tovar. $150 to just sit and talk with her and drink coffee. I... We're going to cover the tarot last. Babe Camp, a self-guided course that walks you through breaking up with diet culture, which is $300. Anti-diet work as death work, a self-guided course on on the grief we experience as we undertake anti-diet work, which is $100. And Body Positivity Tarot, which is $130. Now, tarot is something I actually know a bit about. So I'm curious if we can get any sneak peek on that. Body Positive Tarot is a self-paced course created by Virgie Tovar and Helen She-Wolf Sing. Sang. Something like that. Centering tarot as a tool for recovering from diet culture and deepening your relationship with your body. In this course, we will use the narratives within tarot as healing modalities toward restoring your intuition. An integral gift of the human experience that is undercut by experiences of body shame and fat phobia. We will also provide resources for finding meaning and power through stories and archetypes, discovering your own magic and creating community and art. Learn your body through the tarot. Learn the tarot through your body. Then we, we already know what Virgie has done, but Helen saying, I, I feel bad. I don't know how to pronounce this part of her name. Uh, is an artist, designer, witch, and tarot revisionist. What? 
Tarot Revisionist. Helen co-hosted Astral Projection Radio Hour on BFF.FM from 2014 to 2020 and co-authored and illustrated the Astrological Grimoire published by Chronicle Books in 2019. What is this? The unique astrological perspective invites readers to discover themselves in every sign of the zodiac divided into 12 chapters one for each sign the book offers horoscopes based on the moon phase and mood phase emotions and life events so so readers can always find a horoscope that speaks to their current life moment so it's like a pick your own horoscope doesn't that kind of defeat the purpose of horoscopes and i apologize if you can hear my dog she's very insistent on being glued to my hip first thing in the morning but it's only nine and i just i need some time away from the puppers just for a little bit longer so anyway uh body positive tarot curriculum virtual community full and definite access to body positive tarot course material includes opt-in access to bpt virtual community via slack where you can connect with other students so this is the preview. We can't actually look deeply into anything, but we see a uh, choose a tarot deck, the course timeline. Welcome. Here's what you need to get started. What does tarot teach us about body positivity? Meet Virgie and Helen. Some tarot history and basics. Get to know your deck. Intro to the minor arcana, which I find interesting. Why would you start with the minor arcana? Most when, in general, when you're looking at at tarot in general. Everyone focuses on the major arcana first because the major arcana marks like the biggest events and minor arcana tends to represent more of the everyday milestones that you may go through. Um, major arcana tends to be these either big bouts of fortune, big figures in your life, or big upheavals. And starts with wands, cards 1 through 10, what wands teach us about power. Wands are also... And I don't know if she'll focus on this or not, but ones also um, are about creativity. They also are the fire representative cards. So perhaps that's where she's getting power from. Swords, cards 1 through 10, what swords teach us about disembodiment. So it looks like she's going for a really just, unfortunately, all I have to go on are the titles because I'm not spending $130 on this course. It seems like she went for a very literal thing because so... For those that don't know, we're going to just... So swords can represent danger. The 8, 9, and 10 of swords tend to do this the most. Um, but this one, it's about a sense of false entrapment in that, yeah, you're surrounded by swords and you're blindfolded and you feel trapped and everything. But if you can see, there is an opening to get through. Like, the, the swords are behind her. So there's a chance of, yes, you see yourself surrounded by swords, but you're so panicked that you don't see the opportunities around you. You're so preoccupied with this big thing that's looming over your mind. And then nine, I believe, typically represents a loss. Of, so mental anguish, guilty conscience, that was the one I was forgetting. And time heals all wounds. So, but the thing about swords is that swords represent communication and the mental space, not so much about the body. So the fact that she's like, how swords represent disembodiment, if she's going for, like, literal swords, then I guess, so, like, see, this is Ten of Swords, which represents, like, an absolute defeat and betrayal. That was another one. But it can also represent triumph over evil. But in general, the Ten of Swords tends to be a rather negative card that shows that you are utterly defeated. Uh, so I'm guessing that's where... She gets the disembodiment from, from like, especially from like the last card, the last couple of cards in the suit of swords. But swords are, unless she's talking about potentially um, dissociation, but then I don't think that she would use the word disembodiment so much. But it's again hard to say because I'm doing this strictly on the titles. Uh, pentacles, what pentacles teach us about capital, about body capitalism. Pentacles typically are just a matter of money. They they represent money. I believe the Ten of Pentacles is the Happy Marriage card, but I need to double check. Yeah, it's the Happy Marriage card. 
So the Ten of Pentacles represents like the everything that you would want: stability, happy family, the white picket fence. That's that's what everything of Pentacles tend to be fairly positive cards. I believe Pentacles. The Four of Pentacles and the Five of Pentacles are less so, but I know, I'm pretty sure that even the Nine of Pentacles is like the Wish Giver card. But of course she's tying it directly to money and not about, the the Pentacles are more, they represent money and they are the symbol of Earth, but what it's meant to be is your earthly possessions, your earthly, what, what you have, and it's, I think, whittling it down to capitalism is an oversimplification. Cups, what cups teach us about our relationship to food. Cups are an emotional focus, so we shall see. I think I've gone a little too too in-depth with the different tarot stuff. but And unfortunately, there's nothing I can really gain from these because it just says court cards and then the, the suit. It says court cards as self-portraits, but that could be taken in a variety of ways. And I think saying court cards are purely self-portraits is also an oversimplification of tarot. Court cards represent significant figures that are close to you and could Im have an immediate impact on your life. But then she goes into the Major Arcana. And for anyone who doesn't know, and I'm going to whittle this down a little bit, is the Major Arcana follows the tale of the Fool. He starts off as the fool, and I need visuals. So this is the fool card. And as you'll see, he's about to wander off a cliff, not looking at what he's doing with his little doggy companion and all of his earthly possessions. The, the fool represents where we all start. It represents naivete. It represents an absence of the awareness of danger. And it represents us at what's essentially the most... I don't really like using this word, but the most innocent is the best way to... to frame it because it's about not knowing what you don't even know. It's about not being aware of potential dangers because you're in such a new part, a new space. And then through that you get to the magician where you learn about the physicality and then the high priestess, I believe, where it's about your emotional but then she says high priest what the high priestess teaches us about trauma I could see that lending to it because it's about you being aware of your own emotions, both the benefits and the detriments of your emotions. But the High Priestess should really go under, like, after part one, I think, but, or maybe after part two. But through that, then you get the mother and father figure, the um, kind of teacher figure, and it continually goes, you reach death at number 13 I believe but that represents rebirth and then at some point you find the devil card which is about vice and which actually might have come before death but I don't I don't remember for sure so yeah the, what death teaches us about leaving diet culture death is just about rebirth you can frame that on anything that you want death is about rebirth but the there's an ongoing story throughout the major arcana that ends with the world card in which you are you've basically reached self actualization and you are connected with the full world you can graph this story onto literally any movement and any any subject you want intro to tarot reading tarot spreads three card suggestions so this seems like honestly this seems pretty basic for $130 like this is pretty basic there's there's free websites around it may not have a body positive angle to it but with a little bit of understanding about the backgrounds of the cards you can graft body positivity onto it all you want I think this is dumb I gotta be honest part of me is tempted to buy it just to pick it apart because it is something that I know I don't know how interested anyone would be on that considering I've gone on a tangent on this stupid course <laughs> because it's what I know um, I wish I could actually read this in depth a little bit just to just to kind of see where she's going with the cards and seeing if she's bastardizing the cards at all. Back to the website. So we look at the courses podcast, which is what we're covering, which is yeah, the Rebel Eaters Club. Trips, what is trips? What are trips? Oh, Italy with Virgie. $2,200 for 2023. It's sold out. It's fucking sold out. How many people paid $2,200? 10 to 20 spots. 
10, at, at a minimum, 10 people spent $2,200 for this. Let's walk and eat through gorgeous central Italy. Italy is the home of legendary cuisine, breathtaking architecture, timeless art pieces, wine tasting in vineyards, afternoon espressos, and sidewalk cafes. What the Italians call la dolce vita, or the sweet life, is yours for the taking. I, I don't know Italian. I'm not going to try to pronounce that. Much of Italy's infrastructure is several hundred years old, and Italy has not had a disability rights or fat justice movement that is comparable in size or impact to the ones in the United States. Streets are cobbled. Many are not car bus friendly. Most hotels do not have elevators. Bars and restaurants are narrow. Weight capacity and dimensions of seating are not readily available on websites. Most eateries don't have a website. Though the trip team has worked to tailor this itinerary with mobility and body size in mind. We have done so within the aforementioned limitations. However, please don't change if we're not in them. However, places don't change if we're not in them. We'll be brainstorming hacks and support during the virtual happy hours before the trip. The trip includes two optional walking tours, each of them at least one hour in duration. The trip includes one train ride from Rome to Florence. The train ride itself isn't mandatory if travelers want to arrange their own transpo, but getting to Florence is mandatory. Travelers will be asked to walk from the hotel to the station in Rome and transport their own luggage. Upon arrival in Florence, there will be a bus that transports us and our luggage from the station to our hotel. Here is accessibility information for train travel in Italy. The average weight capacity for hotel beds is 500 pounds. Seating on Italian trains is a modified bench style with movable armrests. See video. We are working to try and get extra seats on the train for everyone's comfort. Here's a fat traveler review of Rome. God damn, like this $2,200. $2,200 to go with Virgie. Okay, there's the host itinerary. Day one, I don't, I'm not really interested in the itinerary. I gotta be honest. How much of this is profit for her is what I want to know. It feels... Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's not that much. Maybe she's not completely taking advantage of people. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Chime in in the comments down below because I'm, I'm curious to hear your perspective on this. Alright, Camp Thunder Thighs. Camp Thunder Thighs is on hiatus until it's safe to gather. Camp Thunder Thighs is about living the five principles I believe lead to deep, meaningful change in our relationship to our bodies. One, community. Two, a critical and intersectional political education. Three, practical tools for healing and resiliency. Four, a non judgmental space to recuperate our relationship to food. And five, movement whose only purpose is pleasure. For a weekend in a beautiful place so you can use these tools to heal yourself and change the trajectory of history, basically. I truly believe the transformative power of radical self-love, political education, community building, and jiggling before breakfast. I also believe in the power of loving the body you're in right now. Our interests include smashing patriarchy, eating fancy desserts, and helping to build a world where every single person, regardless of size or health status, lives a life free from discrimination and bigotry. This intensive is about supporting you, teaching you tools, building community with you, and eating a lot of marshmallows on the beach near many majestic redwood trees. Together we will break up with diet culture and the mindset that keeps us in restriction mode. Camp Thunder Thighs is for all people of all sizes who feel drawn to doing the work of radical self-acceptance and body justice in a fat positive environment. About the HBIC, head babe in charge, Bridgie Tovar. I am an unapologetic fat feminist who loves tiny shorts and bright lipstick. Fifteen years ago, feminism saved my life. I stopped dieting and started living about seven years ago when I met a bunch of rad babes who taught me about the power of loving my body and deploying political education and compassion to change the way our intimate lives and work culture. I feel like that was stopped prematurely. Am I wrong? There's something about that sentence that doesn't feel finished, despite the fact that it's a very long fucking sentence. It doesn't... To change the way our intimate lives and work culture, what? And perhaps I'm just stupid. Perhaps I've looked at this stupid website for too long. 
I completed a master's degree based on my research on how body size and race affect gender. I've written extensively on body image and fat discrimination. I travel globally teaching people about these issues. I've been featured by the New York Times, NPR, Al Jazeera, and Self. It was named on Bitch Media's top 50 list for 2018. About the space. Camp Thunderthighs happens in a national park in the Marin headlands with a beach, mountains, and nature trails nearby. How dare you defile a national park? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, there is minimal traffic or light pollution with excellent night sky viewing. There is wireless internet access, but phone signal is spotty outside and non-existent inside the event slash sleeping space. And this goes on for a while. I don't, I don't really care that much about it. So we'll just, oh, look, here's a little itinerary. So everyone's expected to have lunch and settle in by 1.30. There's diet, culture, and babely living. 201. Not 101, but 201. So, were you, how do you get the 101? Because 201 suggests that it's level 2 of this. So, hmm. Jiggle size and guided meditation. Dinner buffet. Sunset on the beach slash free time. S'mores bar by the fire. And then next morning, free time, jiggle size, and guided meditation. I do like that they don't start before 8 a.m. Uh, boundary setting, practice, and worksheet. Another buffet. Everything's a buffet. Guided journaling plus small group share outs, dear body worksheet. Get ready for vulnerability fashion show. Vulnerability fashion show. Same thing. And then the last day, pack up, divest from diet culture worksheet. Bye for now, closing activity. Check up at 2 p.m. How much is this is my question. There's no price. So let's say if we were going to contact, what would that contact look like? Virgie offers lectures and workshops internationally in the areas of body image, fat discrimination, fat studies, and intersections with gender, sexuality, and race. She offers audiences dynamic programming that highlights intersectionality and feminist methodology. She combines her rigorous academic training in social sciences and critical theory with accessible and relevant engagement of new media, pop culture, fashion, and identity. Speaking engagements have included... Oh my god, I see my school on here. I hate that I saw my school. Why? And why didn't I fucking know about it? That would have been something fun to go to and review for this. I wonder how long ago she spoke at my school. So, alright, links... So it takes us to her link tree. Perhaps this is something else we can go through. Just like, because this will take a couple of videos for fuck's sake. Look at all this. So her link tree is something else we can cover. And her blog. Her blog, this one, okay, no, this isn't just one post. But we can easily go through her blog as well. Last, oh wow, it was over a year ago that she last posted on this. How old are the posts on her newsletter? June 21st. So the, the newsletter is kept up to date. The blog is not. We can look on the blog, though. I mean, we can still read through the blog. So, my God, there's so much to go through for Virgie for our Monday videos. I think what I'm going to do first is we're going to do her TED Talk and that skit she did with her fat friends with the evil veggies, if I can find that video. And then we'll go through her blog and her newsletter, which is going to take several videos in itself because I think these I think her blog goes on for several pages and it looks like the newsletter goes on for several pages we can't possibly go through all of this in one video but it looks like she posted fairly inconsistently on it so we probably won't touch on everything that she's ever posted on especially if it's not like relevant to our interests so that's something to do we're already covering her podcast and her books so, yeah, if there's anything I'm missing... Oh, and her link tree. That's something else. So we have... We've gone through this, so the next several Monday videos will be devoted to her TED Talk. Will probably be the next one that we do. That skit she did with her fat friends. Maybe looking through the rest of her YouTube channel. Going through her blog, her newsletter, and her link tree. And I think that's going to get us through the majority of the summer, quite frankly. It might even take us out of the summer. Because there's so much to go through. Because Virgie has generated so much content for us. Tell Virgie thank you, because we have I have a ton of shit to go over with you guys. And I think I'm going to leave it here. 
Um, sorry if this wasn't terribly interesting, but I just want to do a quick tour of her website to kind of get to kind of show you guys where we're headed. And I'm going to leave it here. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.